Hey everyone, I'm Celia. And I'm Ben. And we are official lens creators. Making Snapchat lenses for people like you. This tutorial will teach you how to create this cool vine growth effect using some clever UV mapping. And then combining that with the new Lens Studio Material Editor. The first half of this tutorial is for people that are just starting off in Maya. If you already have a mesh or you're already familiar with Maya, skip to around 4 minutes and 20 seconds in the timecode. First, we're going to upload a face mesh. So we do this by going to File, Import, and I'm just going to use this face mesh here. Her name is Julie. I got her from ZBrush. She's a decapitated head. Uh, it really doesn't matter what face mesh you use. Uh, you could get it from Turbo Squid, Sketchfab. It doesn't matter. We're just using this as a template. To navigate in Maya, you hold Alt, Left Mouse, Click and Drag to look around, and then Alt, Middle Mouse to dolly around, and Alt, Right Click to zoom in and out. You can see my keystrokes on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Hold space, click, and drag to pick an orthogonal view. We're going to go with the front view. From the modeling menu, we go to Create, Curve Tools, CV Curve. You're just going to click around to make some curves. Just know that three points make a curve. So we're going to go back into the perspective view. Press W to move the curve back to the forehead. On the curve, right click, hold and drag to control vertex. Now to move points around, we're going to select a point and press W to move it around, just like this. And we're going to select some other points. You can select multiple points and just move them around so it looks like it's encompassing the head. Also, if you want to rotate points, you press E. And if you want to scale, you press R. But we don't really need to scale any points for now. After making our first curve, we go to the Poly Modeling tab and click the Cylinder option. A cylinder should appear at the origin. If we go to the cylinder's attributes on the right hand side and click on the poly cylinder 1 tab, you'll see some options. We're just going to adjust the subdivision axis to like 6 or 8. We want to keep this as low poly as possible, but still make it look like a cylinder. Using the W and E keys, let's move the cylinder so its center is at the start of the curve. You can also hold X to grid snap while moving and hold J to toggle rotate snap. We right click and select face so we can edit the mesh. Then we're going to delete all of our faces except for one side. This way we end up with something like a, like a disc or a pizza. Right click and select object mode and click the upside down Y looking icon to center pivot the mesh so it'll be easier to snap to the curve. Once the disc is centered to the end of the curve, select the faces of the disc and the curve, then press Ctrl E to extrude. You should see the faces extruding out to the end of the curve. Don't worry about this. All you have to do is set the divisions to 25, and then you can add a little bit of taper. You can do this all in the pop-up menu, or you can just edit everything in the attribute editor on the right-hand side. Also in the attribute editor, I'm going to add a little bit of taper as well. We want to make the edges smooth for rendering in Lens Studio. To do this, go to Mesh Display and Soften Edge. To see this on the mesh, go to Display, Polygons, Soft Hard Edges, so we can see the soft and hard edges on the mesh. I'm going to make a few more vines using the same method off camera. To UV, click the UV Editor icon, but if you don't see it, go to Windows, Editors, UV Editor. Click on the mesh, then click Create Planar to start the UV. Then click along an edge. In the UV Toolkit, select Cut under Cut and Sew. In the UV Toolkit menu, click Unfold or press Ctrl U. Just make sure your cursor is in the UV Editor when you hit the hotkey. Then under Arrange and Layout, select Layout. Again, you can also press W to move, E to rotate, and R to scale. I'm going to repeat this process by making another curve, so I'll skip to when we're ready to lay out the rest of the UVs. I reshaped the first vine and added a few more. What's really important about this portion of the tutorial is that the UVs should be shaped in a staggered way so that they appear at different rates. This will make more sense in Ben's portion of the tutorial. Now we just prep the mesh for export. Select all the parts you want to export and click Clear Construction History and Freeze Transformations. Also, it helps if your pivot is centered at the origin. You move the pivot by pressing D and press X to grid snap. 
I'm going to rename my mesh to something that makes sense. And then I'm going to export by going to File, Export Selected. Make sure you're exporting as an FBX with the settings you see on the right side of the window. Now I'm going to send these files off to Ben to turn into a lens. Thanks, Celia. Now that we have our awesome vine crown, let's put it in Lens Studio. And then we can drop it under a head binding. And thanks to Celia's awesome positioning and adding that pivot point, we can easily move it to adjust the forehead. And if we want to mirror it across the forehead, we just duplicate it. And then we can set the X value of the size to negative one. Now we're ready to add a material to the vine crown. So let's open up the material library and select the iridescence material. And then we can add that to each of the meshes. And you'll see how one of the crowns looks different than the other one. This is because it has the negative one X value. So all we have to do is turn two sided on to fix that. And then we can adjust the parameters until we get the vine looking how we like it. So this effect is driven by a linear gradient that is using the UV map that Celia created to mask part of the object from the bottom to the top. So let's double click on the iridescent material so that we can open up the material editor. And then we'll create a linear gradient. We'll change the colors to black and white. And then we can add a round node, which is what we'll be feeding it to. And then we'll attach that round node to the boolean of a discard node. And this is going to tell the discard node what to show and what not in the material. So everything that's white will be discarded and everything that's black will be shown. And then we'll just feed the color into that discard and then output that to the shader. And you'll see how half of the vine is now cut off. If we press P on the linear gradient node, we can see how the preview shows that the black and white is being cut off halfway through. So if we change the point A value on the Y end, we'll see that we can move that gradient up and down, and then also grow the vine back and forth. So let's set it to a default of one so that everything is being shown. And then let's add a remap so that we can get a little bit of an edge color going. We'll change the range in minimum to 0.1 and the range in max to 0.5. And then we're gonna to need to create a mix node. And then let's attach this to the ratio of the mix node and create a color parameter. And let's call that edge color. We'll attach that to the B value of the mix and we'll attach the iridescence color to the A value and then output that to the PBR. And then let's pick a good edge color for our material. And let's test it out. All right, so now that we can see that the edge color is working, we're going to need to find a way to dynamically change the point A value on a trigger. So let's create a float parameter node and call that point A. And then since the value is a vector two, we'll change the channel to XY, and then we'll connect that to the point A input you'll see how it changes back to 1, 1 as the default. So let's adjust that so that it's back to zero on the X value. All right, now we can see everything. So we're going to need to be able to reference this in the script. So let's change the script name to point A. And then let's create a new script. And we're going to need to be able to reference this material. So let's create an input statement for that. And then we'll add this script to the scene and then attach the material to it. And then we can see our changes in real time. And then we'll want to use the tween value script to animate to between these values. So let's add a tween manager script. And then we'll delete the example objects and drag it to the top of the scene so that it executes first. We'll add an empty scene object under that and call it tweens. And then we'll add a tween value script to it. We'll turn off play automatically because we'll be referencing it in the script and then we'll name it vine. The data type will be float and then we'll start at negative three and end at one and we'll increase the time to five. So now we have that animation value between negative three and one. We just need a way to trigger it. So let's add an input statement so we can attach the tween object to the script. 
Now let's add a behavior script and drag it above our previous script to make sure it executes first. This will be what is triggering our function. If we look inside the behavior script on line 21, we'll copy this line, which will basically allow us to add a custom trigger to our script. Let's set the trigger to a smile started event, and then the trigger name will be grow vine. In the script, we will rename our trigger so that the string says grow vine, and then we'll create a function called grow vine that'll be called when that trigger happens. So we'll create a statement to start the tween value script. And then what we're going to want to do is make sure that it's not already tweening when we start it. So let's add a tweening variable, set it to false initially. And then inside this function, let's make an if statement that says if it's not tweening, and then we'll run the tween. And then we can just put this inside that if statement. And make sure to set tweening to true before it starts. And then we're going to add a callback function to be called when it finishes. And that's going to be called set false, which is basically just going to set tweening to false and allow it to happen again. So now we're going to create an update event. And to find that, let's just search update event in the Lens Studio documentation. We'll copy their example and then paste it in our script. And then inside that, every frame, we're going to want to first check if we are tweening. And if we are, then we're going to want to get that tween value. And then we're going to set that value into the point A of the material. But first, what we'll need to do is create a variable and call it gradient. And then we're going to set the value to that gradient variable. So now we can add a new vector to make sure that the x value is 1 and that the y value is gradient. And now it should set the point A value to that tween value dynamically. So let's test this out by having a smile started event. Okay, so now all the vines are growing, but they're not growing the exact way we want it to. And I think that's just because we need to change this 1 to a 0 on the x value. Ah, uh, yep, that fixed it just as I suspected. And now what we can do is copy this statement and put it on the top so that we can initially set the vine to be invisible and only start when the user smiles. And you'll also notice that it happens every time the user smiles. And we can easily change this in the behavior script by changing allow to once. And now the animation will only be triggered the first time the user smiles. So now we have a completed lens. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.